Day 12, Total Consecration to Jesus through Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come by the means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Come, Holy Spirit, come by the means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Come, Holy Spirit, come by the means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Purpose, emptying yourself of the spirit of the world. Examine your conscience, pray, practice renouncement of your own will, mortification, purity of heart. This purity is the indispensable condition for contemplating God in heaven, to see him on earth and to know him by the light of faith. The first part of the preparation should be employed in casting off the spirit of the world, which is contrary to that of Jesus Christ. The spirit of the world consists essentially in the denial of the supreme dominion of God, a denial which is manifested in practice by sin and disobedience. Thus, it is principally opposed to the Spirit of Christ, which is also that of Mary. It manifests itself by the concuspience of the flesh, by the concuspience of the eyes, and by the pride of life, by disobedience to God's laws, and the abuse of created things, its works are sin in all forms, then all else by which the devil leads to sin, works which bring error and darkness to the mind, and seduction and corruption to the will, its pomps are the splendour and the charms employed by the devil to render sin alluring in persons, places and things. Reading Imitation of Christ Book 1 Chapter 25 Study also to guard against and to overcome the faults which in others very frequently displease you. Make the best of every opportunity, so that if you see or hear good example, you may be moved to imitate it. On the other hand, take care lest you be guilty of those things which you consider reprehensible, or, if you have ever been guilty of them, try to correct yourself as soon as possible. As you see others, so they see you. How pleasant and sweet to behold brethren, fervent and devout, well-mannered and disciplined. How sad and painful to see them wandering in dissolution, not practicing the things to which they are called. How hurtful it is to neglect the purpose of their vocation and to attend to what is not their business. Remember the purpose you have undertaken and keep in mind the image of the crucified. Even though you may have walked for many years on the pathway to God, you may well be ashamed of it. With the image of Christ before you, you do not try to make yourself still more like him. The religious who concerns himself intently and devoutly with our Lord's most holy life and passion will find there an abundance of all things useful and necessary for him. He need not seek anything better than Jesus. If the crucified should come to our hearts, how quickly and abundantly we would learn. A fervent and diligent man is ready for all things. It is greater work to resist vices and passions than to sweat in physical toil. He who does not overcome small faults shall fall 
little by little into greater ones. If you have spent the day profitably, you will always be happy at eventide. Watch over yourself, arouse yourself, warn yourself, and regardless of what becomes of others, do not neglect yourself. The more violence you do to yourself, the more progress you will make. The Love of Eternal Wisdom Chapter 8 Marvelous Effects of Wisdom in the Souls of Those Who Possess Him Point 98 Eternal Wisdom Besides being the object of the Eternal Father's delight and the joy of angels, is also the source of purest joy and consolation for man who possesses him. He gives to man a relish for everything that comes from God and makes him lose his taste for things created. He enlightens his mind with the brightness of his own light and pours into his heart an indescribable joy, sweetness and peace. Even when he is in the midst of the most harrowing grief and suffering, as St. Paul bears witness when he exclaims, I exceedingly abound with joy in all our tribulations. Whenever I go into my house, says Solomon, even though I am alone, I will take my rest with wisdom, because wisdom's company is always pleasing. His companionship is never tedious, but always satisfying and joyful. And not only at home did I find joy in conversing with him, but everywhere and in everything. Because wisdom went before me, there is a true and holy joy in wisdom's friendship. While the joys and pleasures we find in created things are illusory, leading only to affliction of spirit. Prayers Veni Creator Spiritus Come, Holy Spirit, Creator blessed, and in our souls take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. O Comforter, to thee we cry, O heavenly gift of God, most high, O fount of life and fire of love and sweet anointing from above. Thou in thy sevenfold gifts unknown, thou finger of God's hand we own, thou promise of the Father, thou who dost the tongue with power imbue, kindle our sense from above and make our hearts o'erflow with love. With patience firm and virtue high, the weakness of our flesh supply. Far from us, drive the foe we dread, and grant us thy peace instead. So shall we not, with thee for guide, turn from the path of life aside. O may thy grace on us bestow, the Father and the Son to know, and thee through endless times confessed, of both the eternal spirit, lest now to the Father and the Son, who rose from death, be glory given, with thou, O holy comforter, henceforth by all in earth and heaven. Amen. Ave Maristella. Hail, O star of the ocean, God's own mother, blessed, Ever sinless virgin, gate of heavenly rest, taking that sweet ave, which from Gabriel came, peace confirm within us, changing Eve's name, break the sinner's fetters, make our blindness day, chase all evils from us, for all blessings pray, show thyself a mother, may the word divine. Born for us, thine infant, hear our prayers through thine. Virgin, all excelling, mildest of the mild, free from guilt, preserve us, meek and undefiled. Keep our life all spotless, make our way secure, 
till we find in Jesus joy for evermore. Praise to God the Father, honour to the Son, in the Holy Spirit, be the glory one. Amen. Magnificat, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. In every generation, he has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his sons forever. All glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.